There was a young boy who grew up in a Sephardic home that was steeped in tradition, but not so much in Shemir Satayr of Mitzvahs. But as he grew older, he got more and more into his Torah and his Mitzvahs and his Yiddishkeit, and he became a real Ben Torah. By the time he got into Shaduchim, he was going out with girls from amazing Tyra Dika homes. He got engaged with hopes and dreams and aspirations of building a home that was steeped in Tyra and in Yira. The problem was when he sat down with his parents to discuss how the wedding would be, all the wedding plans, his parents stated unequivocally that if they're paying, the wedding is going to be their type of wedding. No mechitza, not so careful with kedusha, with mixed dancing and stuff like that. He said, I can't, this is my wedding. I said, listen, if we're paying, it's going to be the way we want it. You don't like it, you pay for your own wedding. He had no choice, and he says, okay, I'll pay for my own wedding. That's what I'll do. But as it got closer and closer to the wedding, and he didn't have the money, he began to panic more and more. He was short $8,000. One day he had to go to New York City for an appointment. As he's walking in New York City, he's hit with this incredible challenge of Shmir Sainai. And he does what all of us should be doing, he begins to look downwards and not around him. He pulls out his phone and he's speaking to his Rebbe and he's sharing how difficult and how challenging it is. He needs $8,000 and the wedding is in just a few weeks. And all he says, son, he says, Rebbe, one second. As he's looking down, he sees a crack in the pavement. As he looks into the crack in the pavement, he sees something sparkling. He bends down, he picks it up and he sees that it's a necklace with a diamond pendant. And it says on the back of it, Tiffany and Co. He picks it up, he finds Tiffany and Co in Manhattan. He walks into the store, he shows it to one of the salespeople there, and they look at him and they're like, wow, that's an expensive piece. They polish it, they dust it off. He says, I just found it on the street. They're like, what are you going to do with it? He goes, I don't know. They said, we'll buy it back. He says, well, how much do you give me? Eight thousand dollars. He was careful with Shmir saying, I He was careful with the Yanim of Kedusha. He was Moiser Nefesh for the appropriate standards. And on the spot, while he was speaking about his challenges, the Rebbein Shalom paid him back. I don't know that we're all going to get $8,000 diamonds and lockets in this world for Shmir Sainayim. But in Shemayim, we're going to get schar that's worth so much more than the most incredible diamond, than the most incredible locket that exists in this world.